Overnight, we cruise to England and the port of Falmouth in Cornwall. It's an important trading centre between the UK and France and has been for centuries. The town itself is fascinating with Pendennis Castle, a magnificent fortification built by King Henry VIII, a highlight for many visitors. For me, it's the area immediately surrounding this town, Greater Cornwall, that I love. It's the garden capital of England. Beautiful gardens are synonymous with England and of course so is a good cuppa. Let's face it, a great cup of tea is hard to beat. Whether it be English breakfast or Earl Grey, there's always a great tea. And there is a tour you can take with Viking that reveals the latest and greatest teas from somebody who's growing tea right here in Cornwall. You can gain exclusive entry for Viking guests to cultural treasures. And one such excursion is access to Tregothnan Tea Estate, the first commercial tea plantation in the UK. Now, one of the things that guests learn on this particular journey is that tea comes from a camellia bush, and it is that little growing tip. You have this opportunity as a Viking guest to actually collect your own, create your own little tea bag. It's quite amazing. Tea, the plant, Camellia sinensis, originated in China, and today China consumes over 46% of the total world's tea production. But the Brits give it a pretty good run for its money too. They consume about 46.2 billion cups of tea a year. Tour host John Bennett is passionate about camellias, and his knowledge is exceptional. The reason we grow tea, we can grow tea here, is because we have exactly the same climate as Darjeeling. We also have exactly the right type of soil. And those two put together means we can grow tea. When it comes to harvesting tea, you don't go for the old leaves. No, if you go for the old leaves down here, which is called the maintenance table, mm -hmm. you could make tea, but it'd be very bitter. Right. What you want to do is to go for the young leaves at the top. That's what we're really looking for, the stem and the young leaf and you turn this into green tea, if you leave it as it is. If you leave it as it is, but what you have to do, first of all, you leave it to wilt, yep. which softens it. You then can roll it, and that breaks it up. You then oxidise it if you want to have black tea. You don't oxidise it if you want green tea. It's not just a chance to see tea growing. Guests are taken into the most quaint cottage right on the edge of the river to experience a tea-tasting lesson. First of all, we're going to try afternoon tea. Now, this is blended with Darjeeling. Well, let's try it. Oh, that's very nice. Now, this is the classic tea, typically British sort of tea, quite strong. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's the sort of tea that I'm that's used to. That's a very good British tea. That's much softer. It is, yes. Now, last of all, single estate green tea. Now, the single estate is not blended with anything. That's good. But you can tell it's still quite, it's got quite an earthy taste oh, to it. Oh, it's really good. I love that. 20 years later, and they've learnt a great deal since those early days of tea production. Out of 1,000 acres, only 150 can be used to grow tea because of its unique environmental requirements. To counter limitations of scale, Tregothnan is positioned as a luxury tea brand, and I'll be enjoying a cuppa back on the ship tonight. <laughs>